Lying in my bed, I hear the clock tick and think of you caught up in circles. Confusion is nothing new. Flashback. How are you doing night. today, my friend? Almost Glory be to God, we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. He's alive. He is our Lord and our God. Yeah. If you haven't met him, I'm sure he's coming soon. You will meet him. You will see him. I know I struggled myself in life with the fact that I'd go to church and I'd say, you know, if, yeah, I really want to fit in here at church. I really want to belong. I really want you guys to accept me. Not just in church, but friends, family members, work, co-workers. Almost like I would do anything to, to be accepted, and yet, even at church, you, you know, you, you see this thing, there's this internal battle, perhaps, where... I don't fit in, I don't belong, and, and I feel like everybody's judging me, and, and maybe they are, and maybe they're not. Maybe, maybe the judgment is internal, <clears throat> and we are seeing everything we're not, and in that, that judges us. I'm seeing what I'm not, and that judges me. But that's how it is when we come to Jesus Christ. We see in Jesus Christ, in our God, holiness, righteousness, faithfulness, honor, and respect. We see everything we're not. And that judges us. But fear not, you know, that's the thing. The, the Word of God is life-giving. Life-giving. Jesus so loved you, he came into the world as a sacrifice for you, as a display of God's love when God says, love me with all your heart, your mind, your soul, with all of your strength. Love me more than your mothers, your fathers, your daughters, and your sons. Love me more than silver, gold, food, or water. Because there's going to come a time. And that time is coming. I, I look into the world and, and I can see the clouds without rain growing. Growing. Daily. Producing no fruit. In fact, they've already set it up. They've already convinced everybody in the United States of America that once the vote takes place, No matter who wins, you cheated. You cheated, and it doesn't count. This is what's going to happen. And they've already told you, this is exactly how it's gonna happen. You're gonna come in, you're gonna vote, and I'm gonna look right in your face, and I'm gonna say, you cheated no matter who wins. And what are we going to do as a people? What are we going to do as a believer, Christians? But what are we going to do as the men and the women who are out there in America who say, absolutely, there's one thing I respect, leave me alone. What are we going to do? Don't be deceived. Don't lose your hope. Because that, that's the glory of God's good plan. That everyone would be saved through Jesus Christ, and yet I come to proclaim to you Christ crucified. 
Holy One of Israel has chosen to glorify you. You. And yet, mourning and weeping, great terror is about to come into all the world, especially inside of the United States and America, because they have took for granted the thing they said they loved most, their freedom. The freedom. Just because we have freedom, doesn't mean that with our freedom, we have the right to destroy, to break down, to hurt, to harm, to divide. Rather, we should use our freedom to display something this world needs desperately. A desire to love your neighbor unconditionally. That's, <laughs> that, that might be something only God can do. I'm not sure if I'm able to love my enemy unconditionally. Who could do that? So we're stuck within the balance. What do we desire to deliver us? I'm gonna use the power of my own might. I'm gonna use my gun, my shield, my sword. What am I gonna use to deliver us from this hour of darkness that is coming upon the land? It's already begun, it's already growing. It's not gonna go away, it's not gonna stop. I know, I keep saying it in my own heart as you're saying there in your home. It's gonna go away and come November, I'm gonna go vote and, and then boom, it, it's gone. Yet they've already told you, you cheated. Your vote don't count anymore. That, that's what it's about. This is how we're gonna destroy democracy. Your vote doesn't count anymore. And evidence, you cheated, no matter which side wins. Because in all of it, it's about the destruction of the Republic of the United States. And what makes us a Republic? The Constitution. And, and we give so much authority and the power to it. it. It's just words written in ink on a piece of paper. They could be void. Yet the word of God is not void, will never return to God void. And so we got to recognize what's going to deliver us. Jesus never come into the world to condemn it. The world had been condemned. We see it today. The world is condemned. I can't do good. And I have to wrestle with that. that that's the thing. I can't do good. I'm not a good person. And I'll never be good. And the only thing that separates them from me, and whoever them is our enemy, their willingness to kill me first their willingness to kill you first and you know I feel don't you feel like you've been placed in a place in history in a place in time that's like no other the stress of it the things we see the goodness of it and the evil of it. Placed in a time in history when it's like we were created for this. We were made for this. But because we've never lived through it, <laughs> it's quite the daunting task. 
It's like walking through a valley filled with dead, dry bones. I mean, are, are, have we come to that place yet in life? Where, where our life is as the hope for a better tomorrow, the hope for a better future. It is so dead. It's like parched, dry bones that have been rotting out into the sun for years. Yet it was to those dry bones. It is to those dry bones. We say here the word of the God, your Lord and Savior. God so loved you, he sent Jesus Christ into the world to give you life. From the four winds, God cries out, breathe, O wind, and breathe on these slain. I will come and rebuild you, restore you giving you flesh, putting sinew on you, skin upon you. I will breathe life in you, and it's then you will know I am the Lord your God. When I do this, when there's absolutely no way possible absolutely no way possible that, that you can create or generate hope through the works of your own self because you're dead, parched, dry bones. Completely lifeless. Yet God says, when I call your name from the grave, you will rise and you will know I am the Lord, your God. And I will take away all of your transgressions. I will cleanse you. Take away all the idols and the detestable things we've been worshiping in the places we've been sinning. I will remove you from that place. And I will pardon your sin. I will cleanse you. I will put my spirit within you, says the Lord. And you will obey my statutes and all my laws and all my rules. And you will know I'm the Lord. You know, it's at that time in that place when it feels like we've been set inside of Armageddon in the valley of Gideon. Our enemies are more numerous than the sands of the seashore. Few, God says, I, I will wipe out wipe out and cut off, three-fourths die. But I will leave one-third. And it is through that one-third I will refine them as silver. I will refine them. It's the finest of gold. Those are the people who will call on my name and I will say, that is my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. Even though our enemies seek to destroy us, to murder us, to kill us without cause or reason, because we've become a nuisance to them. And, and what's become the nuisance to them? I will not serve your God. 
I will not bow to your God because it is evil. The nuisance will be no. Nope. I, I don't believe you. Even though thousands of children inside of colleges and high schools and middle schools may become sick with the coronavirus. It's 100% survival rate. It's a cold. It's a sickness. It's a flu. Sure, they're going to get sick. That's what people do. But to take advantage of people, to hurt them and to break them down because they've gotten sick or maybe possibly because they haven't gotten sick. It's disgusting. And there may be no way for us to escape communism in America without killing our neighbors and our countrymen. Yet God says, if we could refrain from that, he will destroy all the nations that come against us. Not just us, but Jerusalem as well. But the Jews as well. Our God is a deliverer and a savior. And he is willing to accept you and take you just as you are. Even though your sins are many, I will remember them no more. And we will look to the one we pierced. Look to the one we hurt. Look to the one we murdered. Oh, cause. Some will ask him, where did you get those wounds on your hands? These wounds came from my friends when I was visiting them in their house. An everlasting sign that will never be cut off. God sure mercies promised to David. And in that day, in this day, God will give us the spirit of David. Spirit of David, the spirit of revelation. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive the spirit or the revelation of Jesus Christ because they neither know the Father nor the Son. Many people believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back into the world simply to judge it. But I tell you the truth. He's already judged. And his verdict is final. Everyone being punished in this world today is being beca punished because you don't believe Jesus Christ was sent by God and he is his one and only son. Because everyone who believes in him has escaped the punishment. The punishment has been removed. Because they believed God was the truth. He was honest. And his word is never void. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He doesn't think like us. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, just as the heavens are above the earth. 
His ways are not our ways. He will remove the transgression. For God so loved you, didn't come to condemn you. But our own unbelief condemns us. But God's word is the truth and it'll never be taken away. Many will rise only to be condemned, while others will rise only to be saved. What separates the two? I came to save you and not harm you. And when I rise you back to life and you're standing face to face with me at the right hand of God with all the righteousness of heaven, you will know I am the Lord who redeems you. I take you as you are. God knows who belongs to him. No, but that's not a, a secret. It's not like the, the, I raise my hand, I call upon the name of the Lord, and then God says, wow, I just had a child. No, I knew you before the creation of the world. I've written your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life before the world even began. This isn't about your righteousness. It's not about your good. This is about God displaying his goodness and his righteousness to a people who didn't deserve it. In the same way, the people showed disrespect and hatred to a holy God, the Son of God, who didn't really deserve it. If you go out and murder your enemy, they will never forgive you. That's why it's better for you to be the one who forgives your brother from your heart because God has endowed you with the power to do it. desires for us to let his people go. And maybe it's the grudge within my own heart that's unwilling to let go of my anger, my frustration, and their unwillingness to agree with me. Because this is the message I've received from Jesus Christ. Everybody who loves me loves Jesus Christ, the one who sent me. There was a time when all the elders gathered together 2,000 years ago and, and they were asking the question, why should we, why should you place a yoke upon your brothers and sisters whom our fathers couldn't bear, neither could we? Refrain from idols. Stay away from sexual immorality and you'll be doing well. For just as it was written and all the prophets agreed, that God would return and he himself would restore the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. He will rebuild it and he will restore it by the power of his own glory not because I'm worthy of it rather it's because he said he would for his name's sake 
for his righteousness sake. I do all these things because of the promises I made to your forefathers. That I would be their deliverer. says the Lord. It says, look, there's David. Right here's David. And I've made him a witness to all the peoples and a commander to the peoples. One day he will be king. A prince of all the peoples and they'll have only one shepherd. Not two, but one. Not one shepherd here on earth and one shepherd there in heaven, but one shepherd, one God, one Lord, the King of all kings. And I tell you the truth, Jesus Christ has fulfilled all these words. He's manifesting them today in our world so that the rest of mankind could be saved. Nevertheless, every family on earth is going to weep and mourn. And they're going to do it separately, in secret, within their own place. They're going to weep and mourn as though they lost their only son. They're going to weep and mourn for Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ, as though He was their firstborn son. They're gonna beg, they're gonna cry out, they're gonna weep, and they're gonna call out for God. With all their heart, mind, and soul. Because there is no hope left except for in Him. And He will provide. designed that way. Came into the world crying, bitching and screaming. We're going to leave the world in joy. Going to go out in joy. We're going to leave the world. We're going to go out in peace. You know, I don't claim to be anything I'm not. Just a man scattering seeds. Seeking for someone to love me. As though I was their flesh. As though I was their bone. As though they depended on me. I don't have to seek far. Because God has blessed my house by pouring upon it the goodness of his spirit. I got the one thing in life that no one can steal from me. God in my presence. God in my presence. And he said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand until I make all your enemies a place for you under your footstool. Is that our future? I'm asking you dead serious right now. Is that our future? A man's boot standing on your face? Because I hope not. 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 Have mercy on us.
because we know you're merciful. Forgive us. Because we know you're, you're forgiving. Love us. Because we know you're loving. Care for us. Because we know you're caring. In God, I have soundly put my trust. During the ninth month, on the eighth day, the word of God became a reality. If 
Time after time.